One type of equation we haven't really talked about yet is what's called a formula. Now, a formula is just an equation that's telling us something about the world or telling us something about the definition of terms. So, for example, we have the simple interest formula, which we can write as P equals P0 plus P0 RT. Now, that formula is defining what it means to be a simple interest rate. But in order to really understand that formula, I have to tell you what each variable represents. In this equation, P with a subscript 0, we would read this as P sub 0 or P0 or sometimes P naught, not being another word for 0. So P0 is the initial value of a loan or account or whatever you're paying interest on. R is the annual interest rate. Uh, T is the number of years that the loan or account or whatever lasts. And P is the final value of the account. So this is telling me what simple interest is and how it works. So this is telling me that if I borrow $500 at 8% interest for four years, in the end I have to pay back, well, the final amount is the starting amount plus the starting amount times the interest rate as a number, so 8% times the number of years, that's 4. If I put that into my calculator, I'll have 500 plus 500 times 8 over 100 times 4, that's 660. In the end, I have to pay back $660. So a formula might be telling us what some term means. This formula tells us what simple interest means. In this case, it means the portion of the initial amount that we have to pay each year. A formula can also tell us how some values that we already understand relate to one another and how they can be used to calculate one another. So let me give you an example of that, too. The area of a rectangle is given by the formula A equals L times W, where A is the area, L is the length of the rectangle, and W is the width of the rectangle. Now, partly because multiplication is commutative, and partly because rectangles' areas stay the same no matter how we turn them around, it doesn't really matter which side we call the length and which side we call the width. But this isn't really telling us what the area means. We know what it means for, for example, has an area of 6 because it covers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 little squares. This formula doesn't tell us what area means, but it does tell us how to calculate it. Right? So we have a width of 2 and a length of 3. 
this formula tells us that the area is 2 times 3. If we draw a much larger rectangle, say one with a width of 600 feet and a length of 250 feet, then we don't need to count all the little squares. We can say the area is 250 feet times 600 feet, which would give us 6 times 25 is 150, and then three zeros on the end. 15,000 feet times feet will be feet squared, so square feet. In both of these examples, we've seen how we use a formula. In real life, we might have to take measurements to do this, but first we find out the values of all but one of the quantities in the formula. And then we solve the resulting equation. So far, solving the resulting equation has been very easy in all of the examples that we've seen. But we might be given information that makes solving the equation a little bit harder. So, for example, going back to the simple interest equation, suppose we're told that $700 is invested at 6% simple interest, and we're asked how long must it be invested to reach a value of 1,120. So we need to find out the values of all but one of the variables. P0, that's the initial amount. That's $700. R, that's the interest rate. That's 6%. If I write it as a number, I can say 6 over 100 or give it as a decimal, 0 0.06. T, that's what I'm looking for. And P, that's the final amount. That's 1,120. Plugging in what I know and leaving what I want to find out as a variable then, I have 1,120 equals 700 plus 700 times 0 0.06 times t. Okay, simplifying the right-hand side, I'll take 700 times 0 0.06, I get 42. Now, to solve this equation, I need to get rid of the constant term on the side with the variable. 1120 minus 700 is 420. I can think of this next step as multiplying both sides by 1 over 42, or as dividing both sides by 42. And I get 10 equals t. t represented the number of years the money had to be invested, so it has to be invested for 10 years. Again, what did we do? We plugged in everything we knew, and then we solved the resulting equation. 